Lac Megantic nestled in Quebec's eastern townships. Since it was built, this railroad has brought life to the close-knit community. But back in 2013, a ghost train rolled into town, and Lac Megantic would never be the same. July 5th was a typical sleepy Friday night, except at the Musique Café. Everyone knows someone here. It's the hot spot in a town of 6,000 souls. Karine Lafontaine, a 35-year-old mother of three, is out for the night with friends and family. Just before 1 a.m., 10 kilometers uphill from Lac Megantic, a nightmare is set in motion. A parked train with no conductor, 72 tank cars long, carrying more than 7 million liters of volatile crude oil, starts rolling downhill. The brakes aren't properly set. The band finishes its set at 1.10 a.m. Geneviève Breton is out the door, heading home, but decides to go back into the bar to grab a bottle of water. The runaway train is now traveling 100 kilometers an hour. It jumps the tracks beside the music cafe, igniting its crude cargo, turning the town into a sea of fire. Monsieur! Oh, mon Dieu! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! We take around 50, and we know all the people there. They're all gone, the people that was at the music cafe. There's no survivor. You survive or you burn. It was too fast. They were trapped there. This is a story of unimaginable loss and the money men who came to town claiming they could make it right. July 6th, dawn comes and the fire is still raging after the tank cars derailed. The hot zone, too dangerous to approach. In the hours after the disaster, families were shell-shocked by what they'd seen. Une demi-heure avant, j'étais là. J'avais laissé ma famille, là. When Pascal Lafontaine heard the explosion, he heads back to the bar to search for his wife, Karine. C'était à mon devoir d'aller rechercher la maman de mes enfants. It's a desperate search. There are three children waiting for news at home. Je les fais en pleurs. Parce que, en voyant la catastrophe de l'intérieur, je, je, je savais très bien qu'ils n'avaient aucune chance de retrouver quelqu'un. Aucune. Je me suis réveillée en sursaut. Puis là, je me suis dit, euh, je ne l'avais pas là. Hours after the explosion, Jeanette Cameron begins to panic, trying to contact her beloved daughter with the golden hair and the golden voice. Puis j'ai texté, téléphoné, appelé, texté, texté, téléphoné. Puis j'étais toujours sans réponse. Fire crews from across the region are trying to get close, on the ground and from the air. But it's still too dangerous to even begin counting the missing and the dead. J'ai été faire le pire travail, le pire... La chose la plus dure qu'une personne a à faire à dire. Je suis parti rejoindre mes enfants et leur annoncer qu'ils n'avaient plus de maman. Everybody loved her. She was like 
un rayon de soleil? Almost everyone in the bar that night died, including Geneviève Breton. The worst part is we won't be able to see her. I will never be able to, to see that she's really gone. By Monday, the small town is now overrun with people who've arrived looking for answers, including me, as I investigate the story for CBC News. Just over my shoulder, you can see the lights there, beyond the police lights. You can see those big spotlights that that go. And of course, that's the, uh, the process. They continue to look for the victims of the tragedy. Tomorrow, the chairman of the board is expected to arrive here. And there are many people who want a showdown with him as they try to get more answers to find out how this could happen. It was a showdown indeed, as the chairman of the American Railway Company, Ed Burkhart from Chicago, steps in front of the cameras. Police had to protect Burkhart from angry townspeople. Am I a compassionate person? I feel absolutely awful about this. I'm devastated by what's occurred in this, this community. We are making an abject apology to the people in this town. So, Just to clarify, on the engineer, sir, are you saying it's the engineer's fault? Uh, I'm saying that, uh, that it seems that adequate handbrakes were not set on this train, and it was the engineer's responsibility to set them. There will be lots of blame to go round in the months and years ahead. And clearly, someone's going to have to pay for the loss of lives, homes and businesses. And that's when the locals noticed some American lawyers who'd arrived in town. That signed up the family of one victim to file suit seeking damages in the U.S. courts. And they wanted other families to know they were open for business. We want to be able to present the opportunity uh, to get fair compensation in American courts to the folks here in Quebec. Um, and we think that we uh, uh, can maybe make up for some of the wrong that was done in Chicago by lending our services to the folks up here. Two American law firms are joining forces to work on behalf of the families. As our colleagues from Radio Canada's enquête discovered, working behind the scenes is a Texan named Willie Garcia. He's not a lawyer. He signs up victims of disasters and refers them to law firms for a fee, a kind of ambulance chaser, or what's called a case runner. It's now just two weeks since the disaster. Almost half the 47 victims' remains are still unidentifiable. Desperate families provide their loved ones' belongings to authorities, hoping to find a DNA match. Écoutez, ça faisait quelques semaines que la tragédie est arrivée. On n'avait même pas nos corps. On n'avait pas nos corps. Still grieving her fresh loss, Jeanette says she remembers getting a phone call from a lawyer's office inviting her to a meeting to discuss possible legal action. Inside a boardroom at a local hotel, those American lawyers are circulating contracts for the families of the victims to sign. By signing, they agree to pay the firms up to a 40% fee on any compensation check. Sont arrivés avec l'avocat québécois, avec des avocats américains qui ne parlaient pas français, qui sont arrivés avec un papier et voilà vous signez, voilà vous signez, c'est là, nous sommes là pour ça. Imaginez-vous dans cet état d'émotion là, vous arrivez dire signe, t'es obligé de signer. C'est là, là. Vous n'avez pas le choix. Jeanette is at the back of the packed room, keeping to herself when she's approached by a persuasive fellow with a hard sell. As Jeanette recalls it, the man who convinces her to sign up for the lawsuit is Willie Garcia. Il y a quelqu'un qui est venu me voir me disant, « Madame, aimeriez-vous que la même chose arrive à une autre maman comme vous? » Alors, euh, finalement, il m'a répété ça à plusieurs reprises. On nous, on, nous, on nous demande là, de d'entrer là dans ce combat là, là tout de suite. Là. Moi, je trouve que ça avait pas de bon sens quand je regarde ça. Euh, ben, ça fait longtemps que je l'ai réalisé là, mais ça avait aucun bon sens là que ça se passe comme ça là. Pourquoi l'urgence pour des sous Je me disais que ma fille n'avait pas de prix. Despite the concerns, the families of 40 of the 47 victims signed on. This is a good day for Garcia. 
Then again, he's an old pro, chasing clients and cash around the world. To some, he's the best case runner there is. To others, he's nothing but a crass profiteer. That's what he told me, yes, all over the world. And he said, I get to the big ones. Become a Fifth Estate Insider and keep up to date with the team you've trusted for more than 40 years. Sign up for the newsletter and get exclusive access to the Fifth Estate. You'll be the first to know about what the team is working on, upcoming stories, Fifth Estate news, and updates on past investigations. Go to cbc.ca slash fifth to sign up and keep up to date with the Fifth Estate. It was one of the worst rail disasters in Canadian history. 47 lives lost after a fiery derailment. Lac Megantic's human tragedy making news around the world. Not long after the accident, a stranger appeared in town. His name? Willie Garcia. So, what's brought him to the disaster zone? Well, this is what he does. It's a long way from Lac Megantic to McAllen, Texas, where Garcia lives and works. This is where Garcia has amassed a small fortune as a case runner. That's someone who finds clients for personal injury lawyers. He is a very persuasive fella. He's got to be to do what he does, and most of these case runners are. Bill Edwards is a longtime Texas lawyer who's crossed Garcia in court before. To him, case runners like Garcia are bottom feeders. In my opinion, it's morally wrong because they are taking advantage of people who are impaired emotionally, terribly impaired. Garcia got into the business of hustling clients around the time tragedy struck small town Texas back in September 1989. A packed school bus knocked into a quarry by a truck. 21 students drowned. Before long, lawyers and case runners were showing up in hospitals and funeral homes, soliciting business from the families of the victims. Approaching victims within days of a tragedy is illegal in Texas. The outrage led to three lawyers being indicted. Willie Garcia escaped charges by testifying against them, leaving him to chase down clients all around the world. Greece, an airliner bound for Athens, crashes in the countryside in 2005. 121 people are killed, and Willie Garcia signs up a dozen clients. Indonesia, that same year, 117 people die in this plane crash, and Garcia signs up almost two dozen clients. It seemed no matter where in the world disaster would strike, Garcia's team was quickly there on the scene. That's what he told me, yes, all over the world. And he said, I get to the big ones. Michelle Whitmore is a financial consultant in Colorado. She's worked compensation cases with Garcia before having a follow with his firm. I was also told that um, the big, um, some of the big airline crashes in Europe, that they had had people there within 24 hours. They're very proud of that, of being on site very quickly. Case running has turned Willie Garcia into a multimillionaire, according to court documents filed during an acrimonious divorce. He owns this sprawling home, Paintings by Picasso and Dali, luxury cars, and a 3,000-acre ranch. But money hasn't bought him respect, not in the Texas legal circles. Former District Attorney Rene Guerra says Garcia is a crass profiteer. I'm sure he's, he's not ashamed to do what he does, and, and he thinks it's right for him to do that, because I'm sure he, in his heart he feels like he's really helping people. For a fee. And what's even more uncomfortable for Guerra, 
Garcia is his second cousin. I just disowned him. I mean, I, I don't believe that you should prey on humans' emotions for benefit, for financial benefit, gain, for any gain of any sort. I'm Jesse Gonzalez. In Texas, they run TV ads like this to protect people from what's called, in legal terms, baritry. Hi, I know you're hurt pretty bad, and, and I can help you get everything you need. Just sign here. Lawyer Bill Edwards helped to strengthen the existing law to crack down on case runners in Texas. To me, these people are dealing with uh, grief and anguish like was meat in a counter. That's the way I see it at the butcher shop. They look at these people as meat and money. The laws against case runners may be strict in Texas, but here in Quebec, there are no such laws, just ethical guidelines. So when disaster struck in Lac Megantic, it was probably only a matter of time before Garcia arrived. The wily Texan quickly connected with high-priced law firms, Houston's Webster Law Firm and Myers & Flowers, a Chicago-based firm. Then the team brought in local lawyer Hans Mercier to act on their behalf. They needed to sign up victims' families. Il n'y avait pas de pression, certainement pas indue. Il y avait un pitch d'avance qui est un peu normal dans n'importe quel métier, mais je veux dire, on est procureur. Là. Notre job, c'est pas de vendre une salade. Oui, il faut qu'on fasse valoir nos services. It's true, these lawyers are supposed to protect their clients and get them the best settlement possible. But Jeanette Cameron was feeling pressured. Her daughter Genevieve died in the explosion. It took a week to identify her remains. Jeanette remembers getting a call inviting her to that public meeting organized by the lawyers, though Mercier denies having called anyone. On a signé. Tout simplement, c'était comme dans ma tête, c'est comme j'avais comme pas le choix là. Tu sais là, c'était comme je l'avais peut-être, mais j'étais pas dans un état pour faire prendre une décision à ce moment-là. Pascal Lafontaine, who lost his wife Karine to the tragedy, said he was also feeling pressure to sign. On s'est fait vraiment poussé à dire, euh, nous sommes là pour vous faire signer, pour vous représenter. Faites-nous confiance. Two years later, and the trains were rolling through Lac Mégantic again. The cases filed in the U.S. never got to court. Instead, the corporate defendants created a compensation fund. More than $100 million would go to the families of the victims. They accepted the money. Hans Mercier, who was working with the American team of lawyers, is convinced the threat of a lawsuit made all the difference. Pensez-vous sincèrement que des défendeurs auraient payé ces montants-là s'il n'y avait pas une crainte d'être poursuivi aux États-Unis? But it wasn't just a big payout for the victims' families. For their legal work, the American law firms were paid $40 million. And what about Willie Garcia? Well, it's estimated the case runner's cut was between $10 and $15 million. And remember, he's not even a lawyer. He just helped sign up the clients. Neither Garcia nor any of the American lawyers involved in the settlement would discuss the case with us. But back home in Lac Mégantic, Pascal Lafontaine feels he was taken advantage of. Cet argent-là était aux enfants. Cet argent-là était pour euh, les aider à, à surmonter les peines et se rendre compte qu'il y a des gens qui n'ont aucun lien rapport et qui viennent piger dans le pot sans, sans remords et où la conscience aujourd'hui. Jeanette Cameron feels like she was re-victimized by the very people who said they were out to help her. Déjà quand les gens ont beaucoup 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 de peine, il y en a qui sortent et je dire on s'en remettra jamais probablement mais euh, que quelqu'un fasse ça à des gens vulnérables comme nous, là, c'est impossible. On peut pas. On ne peut pas taire ça. 
The American lawyers are continuing to seek damages for the victims' families in U.S. courts. As for Willie Garcia, well, no one in Lac Megantic has ever heard from him again. The case runner has moved on, waiting for disaster to strike again. <laughs>